Magandang araw, oras na para sa pinakabagong balita sa lagay ng panahon at sa mundo ng science and technology. Ako po si Jel Miranda and we welcome you to The West TV, Science for the People. Hatid pa rin namin sa inyo ang mga kaganapan sa pagdiriwang ng 11th Philippine National Health Research System Week na ginanap sa Philippine International Convention Center sa Pasay City. Abangan ng ilan pa sa mga kaganapan sa pagdiriwang ngayong taon kasama ang ilan pa sa mga speaker ng plenary at parallel session dito sa PNHRS Week. Dito lang yan kaya tutok dito sa The West TV. Science for the People. Makakasama naman po natin ngayon to discuss about the community-based drug recovery program sa LGU ng Talisay City, Cebu, Dr. Ray Cesar M. Bautista. Magandang araw, sir. Good, good morning, ma'am. Alright. Uh, kwentohan niyo muna kami, sir, tungkol sa inyong topic ngayon dito sa PNHRS uh, Week tungkol sa recovery program or drug recovery program. Okay. Uh, good, good, up, good morning, everybody watching this. Uh, I, I was invited here to speak about the drug recovery program of the city of Talisay. Uh, we started this program in 2013, mm -hmm. long before the current uh, war on drugs. Mm -hmm. uh, we have already started this, but as a health care program. Mm -hmm. And over the years, we have learned from our experience and we have changed lives, we have changed lives. Although we always say that we have changed lives one day at a time. Kasi bukas, hindi natin alam, mag-relapse ito. But so far, in my memory, we have already changed hundreds of lives. So sabi nga natin, sir, talagang ngayon, iba ang pagtutok ng gobyerno kontra illegal na droga. Pero pagdating sa inyong nasasakupang, uh, sabihin sa, LG, sa local government unit ng uh, Talisay, Cebu, ano po bang estado talaga ng uh, paggamit ng droga doon? Um, I think our city is just like any other city in the Philippines. So we are experiencing also a drug problem. Yes, uh, there is a drug problem, but... The question now is, what are we going to do about it? Yes. Because we cannot just keep on complaining and doing that this guy is doing it right, this guy is doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. We need to address this problem because if we don't, we're going to end up as a nation of zombies, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Like that train to, uh, train to Busan thing. Uh -huh. uh, mm -hmm. you, we don't want that. Mm -hmm. we, we want the next generation to be drug free. Mm -hmm. So what process na ginagawa ninyo, sir, para talaga matulungan natin itong mga nabiktima ng illegal na droga? Okay, I can only speak for what we have done so far. We, we, the City Health Office of Talisa, in partnership with the City Social Welfare Department, yan ang strength namin eh, kasi in, in our city, ang City Health at ang DSWD are, you know, we, we work as one. And uh, we actually started with only one addict. One addict only. We, we, we tried to help this guy. And this guy became sober and he recruited another friend and another friend and another friend. And now 
Our daily census at the facility is around 30 to 40 people in recovery. And these are all coming to the facility on a voluntary basis. Mm -hmm. Voluntary, ma'am, because um, this is, ma'am, walang tao na nag, I can tell you right now that nobody enjoys being a drug addict. It's not nice to be a drug addict. And marami sa kanila gusto nang mag-quit. Ang problema lang is, paano? Paano? Just like, uh, Marami sa atin na gusto magka-girlfriend, pero paano? We have to find the right woman. So ganito din sila. Gusto silang mag-quit, pero paano? Who's gonna help them? And that's what we have tried to answer. That's what we have tried to answer. There are people who have recovered from drugs. A lot of them, ma'am. Okay. So sabi nga nila, sir, merong iba't ibang factors kung bakit talaga nalululong sa droga. Paano natin inaalalayan yung mga ganitong tao? Okay. Uh, actually, ma'am, the drug, dependent, drug issue is be coming from a basic human instinct. To really, uh, uh, we, we call that, eh, ganito, eh, lahat naman tayo addict eh. Iba-iba lang ang addiction natin. Merong addict sa, sa shopping, diba? addict sa pagpapaganda. Ito, ang problema lang nila, naging addict sila sa drugs, na bawal. So, um, there is a mechanism for that. There is a drug addiction, you know, corrupts the metabolic pathway sa, sa ating brain. Like, corrupted ang ating rewards pathway. Why is it, ganito lang, why is it when you give an iPhone to an addict, to a normal person, you give an iPhone, that guy will be very happy. He will be texting to kingdom come, di ba? But if you give it to an addict, the first thing he will do is go to the phone shop and phone it to buy siya bu. Are we, have we ever wondered why that is so? What is the mechanism behind that? Because if we can understand the mechanism behind that, then we can give, probably, hopefully, find a way to, to treat that. And in our, that's what our program is all about. We try to, to teach these guys, we try to teach these guys coping skills. How to be happy without the use of drugs. These guys have forgotten how to be happy without drug use. So habang nasa recovery period sila, uh, ano yung mag, ng mga method na ginagawa ninyo at gaano katagal? Ah, ganito ma'am. Uh, gaano katagal? Uh, recovery ma'am is a lifetime process. Until mamatay ka, you always have the potential of going back to drug use. So uh, we divide it into basically two processes, the acute initial treatment and the aftercare. Yung acute initial treatment, the initial treatment will last from 90 days uh, minimum because that's the time that you know, the addict learns to be detoxified from drug use. And the aftercare is for the rest of their life. They are reporting to our facility twice a week. And simple lang naman ang ginagawa namin. Tinuturoan lang namin sila not to use drugs today. Today lang. At sabi, sinasabi ko talaga sa kanila na from the moment you wake up until the time 12 o'clock at night, and you still are drug free, then you have already successfully won your battle for today. Paano natin masabi, sir, na talagang nakarecover na siya, nakarecover na siya, or fully recovered na yung isang pasyente na nagkaroon ng ganitong addiction? Fully recovered. Uh, I really would not use that term, ma'am, because uh, we already do the treatment on a daily basis. But the, there is a measurable thing we can use. We do drug testing. Okay. If you are drug free, that's the, basically yun lang talaga. If you are drug free today, then that's okay. And we have to make that drug free long, longer because the longer you stay drug free, the better is the chance that you will eventually learn how to stay drug free for the rest of your life. Okay. Kasi sir, alam natin ang epekto nito. Nagkakaroon sila ng kaisipan na hindi na maganda, eh, di ba? So pagka ikaw ay nalulong sa droga, meron mga tendency na nakakagawa ka ng mga bagay na hindi, kumbaga, wala sa loob mo. Ah, yes, ma'am. <laughs> That's why we need to do correct assessment. Yes. When these guys come into our facility, we need to assess them properly. Kasi yung sinasabi mo wala sa loob, probably they are already having psychotic symptoms. Yes. Because prolonged drug use can lead to yung tawag natin yan, napapraning na. Eh, kahit may dumadaan ng motorsiklo sa tapat ng bahay, gumagapang at tinitingnan. Paranoia, paranoia ma'am, is one of the effects of drug dependence na prolonged. Kasi, eh, can you imagine, hindi ka natutulog ng limang araw? Can you imagine, tayo hindi tayo nakakatulog ng isang araw? Diba? 
these guys are not sleeping for five days, so we need to assess them properly. Because there are guys that before we can treat the addiction, we have to treat the psychotic symptoms first. And we also have a program for that. The Department of Health has a program for that that is already downloaded to the LGUs. We call that the Mental Health, uh, Mental Health Global Action Program. And that's part of our treatment. All right. May, um, may huli pa kayong mga mensahe, sir, sa ating mga taga-subaybay. At sana lahat ng mga proyekto, aktibidad na ginagawa ninyo sa inyong uh, nasasakupan o local government unit ay may share nyo din sa amin dito. Uh, walang, uh, there is a problem with drugs in our country. Uh, somebody is waging chemical warfare against our people. We need to do something about it. And uh, there is a hope, there is hope. There is recovery. I have seen it with my own eyes. Uh, there is life after drugs. As long as our duty, our moral obligation is to provide an effective treatment. Treatment. Because anyway, if these guys do not select treatment, what we cannot do anything. But should they come to us and ask for help, it is our moral obligation to help these people. I, yun lang siguro, ma'am. Maraming salamat, sir. Maraming salamat. Nakasama po natin si Dr. Ray Cesar Bautista. Hi, Mom. Hi. Oh, broccoli. Para healthy steam ko. But, Mom, did you know that broccoli is prone to worms, eggs, cabbage loopers, and diamond backworm? Don't worry, anak. Mamamatay din yan sa washing and steaming. But what about it being a goitrogen? A goitro what? It has isothiocyanase kasi that can cause hypothyroidism. So goitro... Ang pisa ito! Apply now as a Philippine Science High School Scholar. Download the form at pshs.edu.ph Ngayon naman po ay makakasama natin ang Chair ng Department of Psychiatry ng Philippine General Hospital to discuss about mental health. Let us all welcome Dr. Anselmo Tronco. Magandang araw, sir. Good afternoon. All right, sir. Pag-uusapan natin, siguro brief background muna, sir, ng inyong topic tungkol sa inyong mga diniscuss dito sa PNHRS Week. The topic uh, which is lessons learned on mental health okay. from the community spans my 30 years of experience working in the communities for mental health improvement and the first part I will try to describe that 30 to 40 year history of community mental health in the Philippines from the World Health Initiative to extend mental health in primary health care with uh, 1979 Alma Alta for mental health so I will review the history of mental health in the Philippines. I assume that I have the, the knowledge enough in the field. And the second one is I will describe what I learned as important principles that should govern when we think about developing mental health in the community. Although, sir, syempre, di ba, alam natin na uh, may iba't ibang issue po ng uh, mental health. Siguro dito na lang muna sa Pilipinas. Ano-ano po ba ito? Marami. Sa ngayon, ang pinakapatok is drug abuse. Mm -hmm. But remember that from a medical viewpoint, 50% of people with drug abuse actually have a, another comorbid psychiatric condition like psychosis, depression, mood disorder, anxiety. So pag drug abuse ang pinag-uusapan, from a medical viewpoint, half of the population and drugs also have other psychiatric disorders. So basically, kung tingnan mo, 
right now, if we will invest in drugs, research or training of people to treat it, psychiatric conditions that are important will have to be discussed as well. So pag-usapan natin, nabanggit nyo na ang drugs, di ba? Ngayon talagang talamak ang mga gumagamit ng droga. Pero kamusta ba ang estado talaga ng mental health dito sa Pilipinas? Ang nakakalungkot, wala tayo as a country a very good way of documenting the mental health or mental illness state of the Philippines. But we did one 20 years ago. And from that study, our anxiety rate, uh, 6,000 people were interviewed in the community. 14% have anxiety symptoms or problems. Up to 8% have depression. And psychosis, almost 5%, meaning yung nawawala sa sarili. That's very high. So ganun kataas ang state ng mental illness Actually, not only in the Philippines, but globally. Medyo mataas tayo sa psychosis. So dito sa Pilipina, ay, ibig sabihin may ski sa ibang bansa. Pero, um, syempre sir, alam natin iba't iba rin kung ng mga parara, pamamaraan, kung paano natin uh, pangahawakan o alagaan yung mga pasyente na merong mental illnesses. Pero sa inyo po, by profession, how do you deal with patients na merong mental health problem? Ang nangyayari kasi, gamot lang ang madalas na naiisip sa mga mentally ill people. No? Yun kasi ang traditional na madaling pag-usapan, may gamot ba yan. Pero sa mental health problems kasi, napakalaki ng papel ng pinanggagalingan na buhay ng may mental illness, ang pamilya niya or the community where he lives, or for example, concretely for example, hindi lahat ng mga tao sa nadaanan ng lindol o ng bagyo na Yolanda, meron silang sintomas ng mental health, pero hindi lahat gamot ang kailangan. So hindi siya ganun kadali, may gamot, pero malaking nagagawa ng personal circumstance ng tao yung environment niya, yung nangyari sa kanya na extraordinary event like a calamity, malaki ang papel to help the person with emotional problems. So basically talagang kailangan malaman muna natin yung punot dulo kung bakit nagkaroon ng mental issue yung isang pasyente. Mm -hmm. Tama. <laughs> Pero as of the moment, kumusta yung mga, uh, mga siyempre dito sa atin sa Pilipinas, iba't ibang issue na yung mga kinakaharap natin, iba't ibang problema na yung dumarating sa bansa natin. Pero sa inyong mga pag-aaral, paano natin matutugunan pagdating sa mga uh, mental health problems na tumatama dun sa ating mga kababayan? Interestingly, uh, sabi na isang expert sa mental health program ng World Health Organization that the Philippines has implemented, almost half of our rural health units, meaning the health centers in each town, we have that, have been trained in identifying and management of mental health problems. We are quite happy with that. So, hindi lang siya na ka-communicate sa mga tao to feel good about what people who are advocates for mental health has done in this country. But I just talked with uh, Don, uh, Dr. Nadera Paking. She's an advocate for mental health gap, meaning an instrument to help non-psychiatrists and non-doctors identify people with mental health problems. Almost half of our rural health units all over the country have been trained on that. Can you beat that? That is still without a national uh, dispensation that all of us should learn it. These are people who have the heart for mental health and we've reached half of our RHUs are already trained. I think that's very heartwarming. Siyempre yung kapasidad, sabihin yung capability din ng mga institutions para matulungan yung mga uh, pasyente na merong ganitong issue. Um, institutions, um, meaning hospitals, we have, we could not afford to build more hospitals, but we could well afford to equip 
our health workers, our doctors in all the towns of the Philippines to accommodate mental health as their concern. So that is a strategy from a public health perspective. Not new, not more hospitals probably, but to develop the people in the field, the foot soldiers for the other basic health services of health. So there is template or talagang method para ma-address natin itong problema na to? Yun yung kailangan natin ma-evolve. And in fact, I'm very heartened that the mental health is an agenda in this convention. Because one of my recommendations is there are many people doing what they can, advocating for mental health, but is anyone gathering all these people so that by sharing the stories of successes, there will be a template for best practice in the community? It is worth documenting so that we will all learn from it. And then from here on, we'll say these are the elements of a mental health program in the level of the barangay or the town or the province of the region. And it is a researchable area. Any more messages, na lang, sir, dun sa ating mga tag uh, If there is anything, if there is anything about mental health, the Philippines is unlucky because of the so many disasters that have been coming our way. But for mental health, is it, it is also good for mental health because the disasters provided a sensitive population who experienced what it is to feel sad, to feel scared, to fear for our lives. And people are sensitized to listen to how we could feel less angry, less sad, less anxious. And this is, if I would put it, we are in the cusp of developing community mental health for the Philippines because the context of disaster sensitizes people to mental health. Maraming salamat po. Thank you so much. Okay, sir. Mga kaibigan, nakasama po natin si Dr. Anselmo Tronco. Magandang umaga po sa lahat ng viewers ng DOS-TV. Narito na ang latest mula dito sa Pag-asa Weather Center. Meron mo tayong namataang isang low pressure area sa loob po ng ating area of responsibility. At kanina nga po base sa, sa ating huling analysis ay nasa layo ito ng 1,000 km silangan huyan ng Tugigaraw City. At hindi po natin inaalis ang chance that at least in the next 24 to 36 hours ay maaari pong mabuo ito bilang isang ganap na bagyo. Samantala, sa labas naman ng ating par ay meron din ho tayong namatang isang bagyo at may international name po itong si San Vu. At kanina nga huli itong namataan sa layong 2,660 kilometers ho yan silangan ng extreme northern Luzon. At, patu at mabagal po itong kumikilo sa direksyong Hilaga, Hilagang Silangan. Malit naman ang chance na pumasok po ito ng ating era of responsibility. Para sa pagtaya ho ng ating panahon, asahan pa rin ho natin na sa Cagayan Valley Region, kasama ho dyan na ang Mimaropa at maging ang Kabikulan at mga laluwigan ng Aurora at Quezon, ay inaasahan pa rin natin ang maulap na kalangitan na may mahina hanggang sa katamtamang mga pagulan at pagkidlat, pagkulog. At uh, epekto nga po ito, itong dito sa silangang bahagi ng Luzon, specially or specifically the Cagayan Valley Region, epekto po yan nitong uh, low pressure area. Samantalang ito, tumang, ito namang nasa southern Luzon ay direktang epekto naman ho ng itong uh, intertropical convergence zone or yung ITCC. But here in Metro Manila at sa nalalabing bahagi pa po ng Luzon, ay inasa naman natin ng maaliwalas na panahon, lalong-lalo na ho sa umaga hagang uh, early afternoon. But pagdating po ng uh, hapon, dakong hapon at gabi, ay malaki pa rin ang chance na mga isolated rain showers or thunderstorms. 
Dumako naman ho tayo sa Kabisayaan. Epekto nga rin ho ng ITC sa inaasahan po natin na sa Eastern and Western Visayas ay patuloy po makakaranas ng maulap na kalangitan na may mahina hanggang sa katamtamang mga pagulan at pagkidlat, pagkulog. Pero sa nalalaming bahagi po ng Kabisayaan, inaasahan naman ho natin ang bahagyang maulap hanggang sa maulap lamang na kalangitan. And lastly, on Mindanao, inaasahan po natin ang general fair weather sa buong Mindanao sa araw na ito. Kaya good news pa rin po yan para sa ating mga kababayan doon. Nga lamang ho, na, na rin pa rin ang chance na mga pulong-pulong mga pagulan o pagkidlat, pagkulog, lalong-lalong na ho sa dakong hapon at gabi. Wala tayong gale warning na nakataas sa namang bahagi ng ating mga baybayang dagat sa araw na ito. Kaya't pinapayagan naman ho ng Philippine Coast Guard na pumlaot ang ating mga kababayang maangista maging yung mga gumagamit lamang ng maliliit na sasakyang pandagat. At para naman sa weather outlook natin at least in the next 3 days dito sa Metro Manila, inaasahan po natin na bukas ay maayos pa rin o maliwalas pa rin ang ating panahong mararanasan maliban na lamang sa mga pulupulong mga pagulan o pagkidlat, pagkulog. But come Thursday and Friday, inaasahan po natin ang cloudy skies na may light to moderate rains and thunderstorms. 22 to 32 degrees Celsius so ang tinatay ang magiging agwat ang temperatura di, bukas dito sa Metro Manila. Samantalang 25 to 32 degrees Celsius so sa araw ng Thursday and 25 to 31 degrees Celsius naman sa araw ng Friday. Numako naman tayo sa Baguio City na nanatiling mula 16 hanggang sa 24 degrees Celsius ang uh, temperature range po doon sa Baguio. Normal na temperature range naman po ito doon in this particular time of the year. Habang 17 to 24 degrees Celsius naman po sa araw ng Webes at sa araw po ng BMS. At para sa pagtayo ng kanyang panahon, inaasahan po natin na simula bukas hanggang sa araw ng Friday ay eh, maaaring maging maulap po doon ang maghapon na may dalang mahina hanggang sa katamtamang mga pagulan at pagkidlat pag Kulog. Dito naman sa Metro Cebu, mula 25 hanggang sa 31 degrees Celsius ang pinatay ang magiging agwat ng temperatura bukas. Samantalang 25 to 32 degrees Celsius po sa araw ng Thursday and 25 to 33 degrees Celsius naman sa araw ng Friday. At mula po bukas hanggang sa araw ng biyarnya sa inaasahan natin ng bahagyang maulap hanggang sa maulap na kalangitan lamang na may pulupulong mga pagulan o pagkidlat pagkulog. Doon naman sa Metro Davao, katulad nga ng nabangit ko kanina, inaasahan natin sa araw na ito ang uh, maaliwalas na panahon doon aside for, or apart from isolated rain showers or thunderstorms. At bukas nga sa araw ng Friday ay ganong uh, the same weather scenario pa rin ho ang inaasahan natin doon. 24 to 33 degrees Celsius ang tinatayang magiging agwat ng temperatura bukas dito sa, sa Metro Davao habang 25 to 33 degrees Celsius naman po sa araw ng Thursday and on Friday. Ang sunrise po natin kanina is 5.44 in the morning at tinatayang ang araw naman ay dudubog mamaya sa ganap na lang sa East Chess ng hapon. For more weather updates, mag-alag on lamang sa pag-asa uh, pag website o www.pagasa.gov.ph. Yan ang latest mula dito sa pag-asa. Ito po si Lori de la Cruz. DOS TV would like to thank Filipino Creazione de Mano Incorporated. Visit their showroom at Ground Floor Lobby, PSMBFI Building, 318 Santolon Mode, West Crame, San Juan City. Sitev, the world's leading source of reliable and authoritative news, views, and analysis on information about science and technology for global development. Visit their website at www.sitev.net. And that's it for today. For more information, just log on to www.dostv.ph and visit our social media accounts. And to know more about the Philippine National Health Research System, visit their website at www.healthresearch.ph. Abangan din ang update sa lagay ng panahon mula sa DOST Pag-asa tuwing alas 5 ng umaga at alas 5 ng hapon. Always remember, in progress, science is the key. Kaya sabay-sabay tayong makiisa at gamitin ang science. Kami ang DOSTV, the program that delivers science for the people.